Hello, groups. Uh, welcome back. I know we took a break for a few weeks there, um, but we're going to be coming back and coming right back into um, the Sermon on the Mount, right? Jesus' great sermon that he preached that we find in Matthew uh, chapter 5, 6, and 7. Uh, and so today we're going to be in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, and building off of... Um, if you remember uh, the last topic about generosity, now we're going to be flipping and talking about um, sort of where our priority, priorities lie and where our uh, treasure lies. And so Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, let's read it together and then we'll discuss. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. And so there's a lot for us to cover there. Um, and I'm sure you're going to continue in your discussions. But I just want to take it really quick, verse by verse, so that we can see um, the meaning of what Jesus is trying to deliver here. So he starts off in verse 19 and he says, Don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy. And when Jesus talks about treasure, we got to stop there and ask ourselves, right, what, what does he mean? And when you read the Sermon on the Mount, and we got to remember the context here, he's talking to his, his disciples about the fact that the king kingdom of God is here and that now those who are Jesus's disciples those who have believed in Jesus they're now entering into the kingdom of God and they have entered into the kingdom of God right and so the sermon on the mount is how are we to live our lives now that we are a part of the kingdom of God and what Jesus says is one of the aspects of a disciple who is in the kingdom of God is to not lay their treasures here on earth and so what that means is do not make earth the place where you lay your ultimate desires or set your ultimate goals um, or set your ultimate achievements or set your ultimate uh, treasure really is the word that he uses, right? The place that you value the most should not be earth. And he gives us a few reasons as to why. He says, number one, because um, on earth, uh, moth and rust destroy. And we see this constantly in our time. The objects that we buy and we purchase, those things in a few years, we throw them out, right? And so think about it. Everything that you've ever had at this point, like things that you had 10 years ago, Maybe you still have that old worn out shirt that you've had for a while, right? And maybe you still have those old worn out shoes, but, but more than likely, those things have already been thrown away. The phone that you've had for sure has already been thrown away. Um, that laptop that you really wanted 10 years ago and it was the latest and greatest thing and, and you were the one to get it first, that's now in the trash um, and, and it's been buried by everybody who's bought it after you, right? And so all of these things that we buy, that car that we bought 10 years ago that we were so excited about, right? That's, that's in the trash. Um, all these things that we buy, eventually over time, this home that you're maybe looking to purchase or the next car you're looking to purchase, over time, as time goes on, that stuff gets destroyed. It gets destroyed by rust um, and, and, and it gets thrown out by people, right? And so Jesus is saying, nothing here on earth is eternal, Nothing here lasts. It doesn't even last a few years, let alone a few hundred years, let alone a few thousand years, let alone a few hundred thousand years, right? So he's saying everything we have here is lost. And I'm going to try to speed it up. Second thing he says, where thieves break in and destroy. And that's just showing the evil of the world, that there's people um, that can attack the possessions that we've had or the life that we've tried to build up, the goals that we have set for ourselves to achieve here on earth. Um, everything can be attacked and it can be destroyed uh, and it can be changed. 
And here's where he flips it. But lay for yourselves treasures in heaven. And he says, lay for yourself treasures in heaven because in heaven, it doesn't go old. It doesn't get uh, destroyed by moth. It doesn't get destroyed by rust. And on uh, in heaven, it does not. No one comes in and takes it. It doesn't change because God himself doesn't change. What he promises us in heaven is eternal. It lasts forever. And so he says, lay for yourself treasure in heaven. And he continues and says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so we can ask ourselves, um, we can flip that and we can ask ourselves, where is my heart right now? Where is my treasure right now? And we can see where our heart is by where we answer where our treasure is, right? So wherever our treasure is, there our heart is also. Wherever our um, priorities are, wherever our desires are, wherever our um, ambitions are, our passions are, our goals are, that is where our heart is. And where our heart is, that is where our treasure is, right? And so if we're passionate for the things of the Lord, if we have a desire for the things of the Lord, if we're um, building up the kingdom of God and the people of God and the church, then by that we show that our heart is for the kingdom of God and our treasure is in heaven. And he uh, continues in verse 22 by sort of breaking down this process and saying that the eye is the lamp of the body. Um, And he says, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, well, then you're whole body will be full of darkness and if your light is darkness how great is the darkness and so that's a really cool analogy because he's going okay you have light but if your light is darkness and you're already in darkness that just increases the darkness and he says that the eye is the lamp of the body and so the bible has this thing about the eye um, and and in james it's called uh the lust of the eye and so it's this sort of desire to where i see it and i want it and so I go for it. And the world has this way, and this is basically where cultural, what our culture is built on, is seeing something and wanting it and going after it. It's this desire that we have as people of the flesh that when we see something, we desire it and we begin to go after it and begin to pursue it. And what he says is if your eyes are set on the things of God, if you see the world as God sees the world, if you are following Jesus and have this worldview of Jesus, then you are following um, and you have the light uh, of God. You have the passions of God and you have the treasure of God. And if you're eye is focused on the things of the world, the passions of the world, um, the sinful things of the world. Then he says, you, you're in darkness. And, and how great is the darkness if even your light is darkness, right? And, he, and then he continues and he finishes with this. No one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. And he finishes by saying that there's a choice that needs to be made. Right, Either your treasure is on earth or it's in heaven. It's not a thing where it's 50-50. Either your eye is full of light and, it, and it's following God and, and you have that light or you don't and you're in darkness. Um, and, and either you're serving God or you're serving money. And when you think of money... Um, it is the value system of the world, basically, right? And, and, and it, it is the thing that we use to survive here in the world. Uh, and, and so he's going, you're either serving God or you're serving yourself or you're serving your sinful desires or you're serving your either your evil passions. And he's going, where is your treasure? Is your treasure in heaven where it's not destroyed or is it on earth? And he encourages us from the very beginning to lay our treasures in heaven. And so what that means is that it's active, right? And in every stage of life that we're in and every step of life, we have these decisions that we can make to where we're laying up treasures in heaven. And we do that by evangelizing to others around us. We do that by serving the church and building up the kingdom of God. Um, We do this by serving one another wherever we are, 
especially in life groups, um, by encouraging one another. We're building up this kingdom that God has for us. And, and when we build up the kingdom um, by the grace of God, with the strength that's given to us by the Holy Spirit, man, we're laying treasures in a place where uh, nothing can touch that treasure. It cannot be destroyed. It cannot rot. Um, it, it cannot be taken away by any thieves. It, it's there and it's there forever. And so as you continue in your discussions today, I just encourage you um, to be honest about where we are because we all know as people, man we have this lust of the lust of the eyes we have this um, I see it and I want it and I want to pursue it we have this sort of jealousy where we see something in others and we go I, I want that for myself and, and so be honest with where you are because it's going to help the entire room to be honest and then you can begin to talk about okay what are some ways that we can change our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit by the grace of Jesus Christ what are some ways that we can set our eyes um, on heaven and on, on the things that God has for us and how do we build up this desire for God and this passion for God and how do we begin to lay um, treasures in heaven and so blessings to you I'm going to pray for you uh, and then you will be um, going into discussion. Father, uh, we thank you that you have saved us, loved us, um, that you have brought us into the kingdom of God, that you have uh, built us as a church. And, and as we transition into this time of discussion, Lord, help us to be honest with where we are. Um, and, and then after we leave, Lord, help us to really apply and really think about how do we um, strategically and how do we intentionally uh, how do we intentionally lay up treasures in heaven? And by the power of the Holy Spirit and by your grace, give us the power um, and the ability to be able to do that. And that is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Blessings.